Hey, welcome back. I'm Sean Barr, and at Looking Point, we help IT organizations make decisions around collaboration, security, and networking. Today, we're talking about the Microsoft Surface Hub 2S. It's just over my shoulder here. I'm going to get it unboxed, and we're going to step through it. Let's get into it. We're back and we're talking about the Microsoft Surface Hub 2S. Now, before I get started into talking about the functionality and how it works and all of our thoughts around it, let's talk a little bit about the build and the overall just setup of the Microsoft Surface Hub. So when we got the Microsoft Surface Hub, it came in a box and as Big surprise, it came in a box, but it came in a box and uh, the stand came in a separate box. So we set up the stand. Once we did that, there's some little nubs that go on the back of the display that you essentially just lift it on and kind of set it in those these little slots on the back and you just drop it down, put a couple screws in the back of it and it's, it fixes it in place. So really simple to get it on the stand and ready. You will need a second person to lift up the display because it's kind of awkward to lift up the display on your own. I tried it, it wasn't very easy. So I need a second person to lift up the display and get it mounted. Once that's done, essentially you're gonna power it on just like you would a traditional laptop or computer. And much like a laptop or computer, you're gonna go through a setup just like an OS. It's gonna ask you a, a language setting, you're gonna join it to the domain, all of the traditional things that you would do from a PC perspective. Once that is done, you're gonna to need to log in with an administrator account. Now, one thing that we noticed is I tried to join this with wireless. Um, because our wireless requires a username and password, for whatever reason, it didn't store that username and password information, and you can, can't really get that and log in with that at any point that I found through the interface. So what I needed to do is plug it in with an ethernet connection, get it back onto our network, and then log in with an administrative account, and I could go in there and modify settings. Once I logged in with the administrative account, you go through the settings menu, and essentially from there you can do updates and things of that nature. So we did need to run Windows Update on it, and that took a you know, pretty long time to run all of those updates to get it to where it was at and ready to really use. After that, we noticed that it was set up for Skype, and there's a couple of modes. There's three modes to be exact for this unit. And if you use Intune, Microsoft Intune, you can control the mode that it's in through Microsoft Intune if you're, if you're controlling them that way. If you're not controlling them that way, there's a way you can load the mode file onto a USB stick, you plug it into the unit, you log in with the administrative account, and you go through the settings to set it in the right mode so that you could match your chat or video solution. So if you have Skype, Microsoft Teams, those types of things, those are what the modes are for. So we leveraged uh, a mode that got it to leverage Microsoft Teams so we could do all of our testing, and that gets us to where we are. The first thing we're gonna test is the connect button. So when I press the connect button, if I was connected with an HDMI my cable, it would just show my display. If I don't have anything connected, it's going to take us to a blue screen where we can wirelessly share content to the display or we could plug in an HDMI cable. So I'm going to press that now. Once I hit connect, it's going to take this blue screen and it's going to say, hey, Surface Hub is ready for you to connect wirelessly or plug in the cable. So what I'm going to do is grab my laptop and connect remotely. So I've got my laptop here. I'm going to be recording the screen here so you can see both of the, the interaction side by side. Um, essentially what I'm gonna do is press the window K key and it's gonna pop up a Bluetooth connection menu and basically it's gonna show things that are around that I could connect to and it will show the Surface Hub. I'm gonna click that. And what it'll do is pass through audio and my display. Now one thing that I did notice is at the bottom of the screen, you can see it here, and I'm not sure why this is. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of work on it, but you can see the bottom of the display never really resolves. Um, so I had this with the wireless sharing, and I need to figure out what it is. I haven't figured it out yet, but we will figure it out and, uh, and let you know. But wireless sharing, you know, from my perspective, hasn't been that stable. Maybe it's a setting on my laptop, maybe it's a setting on the board, uh, but wireless sharing has not been the most reliable. So I would say at this point, with what we found, wireless sharing would not be the way I would be installing this in a conference room. But we will hook up the wired sharing, and um, so you can see that as well. 
So we've got the computer connected to the display through the HDMI connection. I've got this little dongle here and the USB-C cable connected to the display. Now the HDMI allows for the display to be displayed and it also does audio pass-through as well as the HDMI connection does multi-touch pass-through. And so essentially here, what, once that's set up, I can actually scroll by using the touch on the display and I can also use the touch anywhere on the screen. And so essentially the touch is passed through to the machine. So that is sharing your display through the Microsoft Surface Hub. Let's get into the whiteboard. I'm gonna go ahead and press the whiteboard feature and I know it's gonna be really bright. It may be hard to see all the utilities along the bottom. We'll try to get another shot of them so it makes sense uh, for you, but we'll do our best to show you along the bottom. So if I hit this button uh, down below, it puts it in a, like a finger drawing mode. And if I do that, um, I can draw with any of the colors here. I can select different colors, the highlighter, and draw. If I unselect that and use my finger, it's gonna move around the canvas. So it can kind of detect if you're using a finger or you're using the pen. So if I use this pen, I can draw essentially with the tip of the pen. And one kind of neat thing is if I use the back of the pen, it automatically uses it as an eraser, which is kind of a neat feature that it detects, you know, the front and the back of the pen. Additionally, I have things like a ruler and I can use multi-touch to kind of position this ruler in whatever way I want. And then I can draw a straight line like that. It's kind of nice. Um, additionally, we have some, some text here. And if I write my name here, it types it in. And so I have the ability to kind of write some text and put it in here just by writing with the actual pen. Um, there's obviously, a, there's an eraser. And when I click on that, it says, hey, by the way, you can use the back um, or I could use the front if I tap the eraser down here at the bottom. I've got a back and I got a forward button so I can, you know, undo and redo. So now if I want to add an image, I have this option down here. I could do an image from a library or I can add an image from a Bing search. So I can write in here what I want to see. I'm going to write dogs and it, it searches that and I'm going to hit the dogs button. It's going to search Bing. It's going to pull up images of dogs. I can grab this dog here and hit the plus sign and it's going to add it to the, the whiteboard canvas. Now, one thing that's kind of neat about this is I can zoom in and out with my fingers. Um, I've got some other functionality where I could copy paste. I could do things from a PowerPoint document. I could add those things in to the board, all from the whiteboard. It has a lot of other features. I could do a whole video just talking about the whiteboard capabilities, but as a whiteboard, it does a pretty good job. Um, so that's the whiteboard. Now, when I'm done, I have the opportunity to just leave the board and over time it'll just say, hey, you aren't here and it'll end the session. Or I could hit the end session. If I wanted to do other things besides just whiteboarding like we did in the other video, I can hit this button here and it'll show me a screen. I could close it down or I could hit the start button and open up an app just like a Windows device. I could pull up a PowerPoint, do things like that and start to use it like a regular app. Um, I could use PowerPoint like a regular app. I could create a PowerPoint and I could still have my whiteboard. If I wanted to manage these things, I got a little slider and I can say, hey, go to more full screen and still have some whiteboard space over here. I got to switch this to a pen and I could still draw and I could, you know, add and remove slides just like I would in a regular PowerPoint. Um, if I wanted to manage my screens that are open, I could close PowerPoint and just go right to the whiteboard. I could use this maximize arrow and it'll bring it back as a full whiteboard. Uh, one of the things that I will say is this is in full screen mode and I just kind of swiped up at the bottom and it shows exit full screen and it gets me out of the full screen. One thing I would say around this whole thing is the UI took a little bit of getting used to, but once you get used to it, it's not too bad. It, it seems a little clunky at first, but it's just learning how Microsoft intended you to use the Surface. Um, the last thing I'll say around this is if I just hit end session, it's going to say, hey, are you ready to end your session, your whiteboarding session? It'll get rid of all the content that I created. Just hit yes. It would time out and, and then it's going to go back and reset itself for the next person. 
The last thing that uh, we'll cover as this thing is reloading is I could also log into this um, using my username and password credentials and it's going to pull in all of my OneDrive documents and I could really essentially use it just like a desktop computer. Now. I could show you that um, in detail and we could do a whole video on using it from a user perspective. If I just click sign in, it's going to pull up this virtual keyboard. I've got a keyboard plugged in here and I'm just going to type my name here. Uh, it's going to search Active Directory. It's going to find me. I'm going to click my name and it's going to ask for a password. So I'm going to type in my password and it's going to log me in. Once it logs me in, it's going to build a desktop for my username and password. Now there's a couple ways that you can log in the way that I just displayed. Maybe you have a, a keyboard in the conference room and you have users log in. There's another way where you can use a USB token and plug it into the USB port and it will authenticate you that way. Um, this is just a message saying, hey, by the way, don't leave yourself logged in because this is your AD username. Um, so there was the, the USB, USB plug-in that you can plug in and it'll log, in, log you in. The other way is by using Microsoft Authenticator and it will authentic give you a, a pin or a, a code as opposed to using your actual password and typing it into a shared machine. All right, so now it's logged me in and I can see files that I have recently viewed uh, on OneDrive. I can also, um, you know, so I could open up a presentation, um, you know, I. I I don't have anything very exciting. I'll pull up a PowerPoint. I'm not really sure which PowerPoint this is. I'll continue with me. And it's gonna say, hey, I'm gonna download from SharePoint on the cloud this Excel document. And so where this may be useful is if I wanted to, this is just some numbers I was calculating. So so if, if uh, you wanted to pull something up, some app up through the cloud, you could do that here. Um, so, so as an example, would be walking into a conference room, logging in, and this becomes your desktop. Me personally, I think I would rather, um, I'm going to close this out, I would rather use my laptop, bring it into a meeting space and connect my screen. That's just my preference. I could see uh, some users really wanting to just walk into a space without an actual laptop and lugging that around. It may make it easier. But for me, if I'm going into a conference room, I'm going for a meeting, maybe a whiteboard session, maybe a video session. So that's how I would be using it. I'm going to hit in session. It's going to log me out and it's going to be ready for the next participant. Let's talk a little bit about scheduling a meeting and how you get this join button to appear. So leveraging Microsoft Teams, I went in and I scheduled a meeting. I invited the board and I also invited a participant, Marshall, to join in through the board. So in order to join the meeting, I'm just going to tap the join button. And once I do that, it's going to take it, us into Teams and take us right in, into the meeting. All right, and we're joined in. So hey, Marshall, thanks for joining. Yeah, thank you. All right, so we're going to step through a little bit about this, the Surface Hub. Now, we've, we set up the meeting, we joined it, and now we're in. One of the things that we noticed um, was the camera angle. So it's kind of just getting the top of my head. You got the camera behind me. It's kind of an interesting angle uh, that I'm noticing here. Well, I think if you, you know, we know our floor space and right now everything looks a bit stretched yeah. from my side. Well, what, one thing that I did bring is I brought this USB camera, which we can leverage this USB camera. And that's one of the nice things about the Surface Hub is if we wanted to plug in a camera, we can. So I've got this camera here. I'm just going to plug it in. All right, so one of the things is I plugged in the USB camera and I will set that up here. So this is just the Logitech camera. So we're gonna see when we switch from the traditional camera to the Logitech, we're gonna see some kind of interesting things. So I'm gonna switch the camera to, I'm gonna leave this to the microphone array and I'm gonna put this to the C922. And so now you'll see that the experience is a little bit better, I think, because I get my whole face in here and it seems like it's the, the accuracy of, of, I guess, the aspect ratio seems right. Yeah, so I can see from the desk behind you that's in that corner, it's now looking more of a normal shape. It looks less stretched out from the other one. The hallway looks less stressed out. You're angled better. You're actually a lot sharper. Everything's a lot sharper. I don't know if that's also because or zoomed in a little bit more to you. Um, but yeah, I mean, also just the whole aspect ratio and the angle that the camera has on you 
looks more natural. Yeah. So, so one of the things I think is important is if you're considering getting a Surface Hub, I think really considering using a USB camera and what you can essentially do since they made it so easy, you could pop this this one off. I mean, this is this is a USB camera. The the native camera is it's it's a USB camera, and so replacing that with a Logitech may or another USB camera of other type could make it really nice for your experience. All right, let's get into some content sharing. So now I'm gonna present content to Marshall on the far end. So right now I'm in full screen mode. So that means that it's showing the video, the participant on the other side, and it's got a little, some controls around for the video. On the far right hand side, there's a button that I can press that'll minimize the screen and essentially allow me to show the whiteboard. Once I've done that, I can hit the share button right here and it's going to share my screen. Once I'm sharing, I can actually start whiteboarding and the participant on the other end can see the content that's being displayed. Additionally, if I wanted to share an application, I can hit the essentially the start menu down at the bottom. It's gonna pop up all the applications I have. As, for this example, I'm gonna pull up PowerPoint. Now the far end participant sees both the whiteboard over here and the PowerPoint. So I could pull up just a generic PowerPoint slide so I could scroll through the slides. And I'm just th scrolling through. And if I wanted to make this presentation full screen, there's a full screen button here, and it's gonna make the presentation full screen. Now, as I'm scrolling, now, now the scrolling changes to up and down versus left to right. And if I want to get out of this mode, I can drag my hand up. It brings up the little menu bar at the bottom, hit exit full screen, and we're going to go back into this mode. And so I have the ability now to essentially select apps down at the bottom. If I want to go to PowerPoint or if it got lost, I could go select the whiteboard all by this middle button, which gives me the ability to control the content that I'm sharing. So once I wanna stop sharing content, I can hit the little stop sharing content and the content will stay alive on the, the board, but it'll stop sharing it to the far end. If I wanna go back to a full size screen of the participant on the other end, I can just hit the maximize, maximize button and he'll be back. So Marshall, how was it on your side? I pretty much was following everything you said and I was seeing what you were seeing, so it worked. Great. All right, now that we've done whiteboarding, let's have Marshall share his content to us so we can see what that looks like. Definitely. Let me share my screen, which is a Microsoft Edge browser. Oh, awesome. That's great. So we can see that, hey, we've got a, a Surface Board and a Surface Board. That That's awesome. That's right. And I have a couple examples here just going through the uh, different images. And uh, here's one where you've actually put multiple boards together on a wall. Awesome. All right, well, great. Well, thanks for that. Hey, Marshall, thanks for being here. Thanks for helping me demo the Microsoft Surface Hub 2S. Definitely. This is, uh, this is kind of fun technology, so glad to be here. Thank you. All right, we'll see ya. All right, so this wraps up our overview of the Microsoft Surface Hub 2S. I hope we covered all the features that you're interested in. It felt like we covered a lot. We covered whiteboarding, we covered joining a meeting, we covered sharing content, all of the key features around the Microsoft Surface Hub. If there is anything that we didn't cover or something you want to know more about, make sure you leave a comment and make sure you like and subscribe so you get all of our content as we release it. And we will see you on the next Tech Talk. Thanks for watching. See you later.